Well, welcome every day, everybody, as we launch WVU Marketing Communications today from West Virginia University, a syndicated show that's at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and marketing practice. Initially, this is a bi-weekly program that will highlight an emerging or current trend impacting marketers today. And hosted by Cindy Greenglass, our inaugural faculty member in the Master's of Science DMC program, we will hear from leading professionals who blend the academics and practice of data-driven marketing today. So let's kick it off and invite uh, Cindy onto the show. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Paul. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome to WVU Marketing Communications today. Um, today, we're very fortunate. Our guest is Susan Emmerich, and we're going to tackle the subject, is data-driven the buzzkill of marketing? Um, this program, we want to ask the question, uh, what has data-driven done to marketing? Has it dehumanized it? Do engagement, awareness, and loyalty even matter any longer? And our guest today, Susan, believes that data-driven marketing infuses the very soul of marketing. So uh, let's see. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Susan Emmerich, our very first guest. Susan is a passionate, data-driven marketing change agent. She has navigated the evolution of Internet marketing since its inception as an early pioneer in digital and social networking for business. She was instrumental in creating IBM's social insights practice. As a result, IBM was awarded some very prestigious awards in best socialized business. Susan has served on uh, several advisory boards and she is author and co-author of several books, including her most recent one, The Most Powerful Brand on Earth, a must read for anyone striving to build brand advocacy. Susan and I are fortunate to be part of the WVU faculty as online adjunct instructors in the new Masters of Science DMC program. So welcome, Susan. Thanks, Cindy. It's great to be here. Susan, let's kick this off, and, and I'd like to ask you, what is data-driven marketing, in your opinion? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think the, the foundational premise is essentially using data to understand customers. And as marketers, we've been doing that forever. That's the bedmark, uh, the bedrock, or really the hallmark, if you will, of effective marketing, right? I also think about we've been using it a long time, from primary to secondary research to analyze behaviors in the early days, and also you and I having a heritage and legacy in direct marketing from collecting and keeping contact data, information current about our customers to today's more advanced capabilities to understand communication preferences across channels from mobile to social to web, uh, the ability to use that data for more advanced uh, capabilities that we now have uh, at our disposal, like predictive modeling, propensity to buy models. All of that is essentially foundational in data. So what's changed for us, and really it's changed the game for everyone, is the onset of the internet and evolution of mobile devices and it's not only changed the way we as consumers access information or learn about uh, what we're about to buy or or research that we're able to do about our buying patterns um, or it, well, luxury goods that we're going to spend a lot of time um, researching before we make those decisions but on the flip side of that that activity has opened up a massive set of data. These data streams come from all devices, so they generate a lot of data, um, so much so that it's even called big data now in the technology world. So without exposing customers' privacy and, and really having the ability to use data and collect it from digital channels, whether it's a customer visiting a website, reading an email, or using their mobile device, we can really start to uh, collect that data to understand real-world customer interactions uh, and, and build experiences around them. So a lot of advances uh, from the internet made this all possible, um, but you're starting to really see it 
applied in the advancement of technologies like CRM, software as a service, and even sales engines that are uh, all driven, uh, and marketing engines for that matter, that are all driven based on data sets now. That's fascinating. So data has really, and the technology that allows us to capture that data, store large amounts of data, and in, and and report on that data has allowed us to understand and market more effectively, target our audiences more effectively, and, and reach our audiences more effectively. Uh, but I'm wondering, Susan, many of us that came up through marketing uh, are used to terms such as awareness, engagement, the, this maybe perhaps the soft metrics of marketing, as it is sometimes called. And that data-driven marketing, we're talking about measurement terms, ROI, uh, click-throughs, sentiment tracking with a far more measurable, are uh, pushed to be measured and held accountable from a budgeting and a revenue standpoint. Is this taking some of the creativity out of marketing as a practice? I actually think the opposite. <laughs> and, it, and what it allows oh. us to do as, as marketers, no matter what role that you're in, whether you're a copywriter, a designer, or a strategist, all of the data, if you are open to understanding what it can bring to you, it can make you smarter. So it can help drive efficiencies in the way that what you're writing will actually resonate with an end client or improve the effectiveness of, you mentioned, tracking and measurement, but help us to demonstrate cause and effect of what's working, what creative was drove more of a conversion or through multivariate testing, we're able to actually see what's working better. Was a particular visual more appealing that that uh, was the, the, the messaging uh, more on point, that the ability to use that analysis and really data-driven analysis from pathing to tracking every touch point allows marketers to be more, more precise, to uh, be uh, more specific and relevant through either addressable media, uh, the channels in which they are programmatically um, pulling together or the omni-channel experiences that, that, that they're creating. All of this data-driven essentially empowers us to do a better job of delivering more real-time, in-the-moment experiences that are much more personal, more highly relevant to customers, and even to the point where it's getting so sophisticated that you can do so in the moment while the action is happening. So, for example, you're in a retail uh, store, brick and mortar, and what do you know? You're presented a coupon um, because it recognizes your mobile device in the store and presents you with a oh, surprise and delight. You have an opportunity to save 20% off your purchase. So those are the kinds of um, data-driven experiences that now allow us to get more sophisticated in real time, even based on uh, other examples like supply and demand, which takes the forms of dynamic pricing. Uh, a great example of how this plays out is in the travel industry, where you're seeing uh, examples of how they put deal bundles together. Uh, for flights, hotels, and ground transportation based on uh, vacancies and things like that. So I think it makes us a lot smarter, and I think it is definitely going to impact the skill sets that every everyone in our profession has to build. Great. Thank you, Susan. I'm going to um, have a short break in a couple of minutes, but I do want to ask one quick question from you. Uh, it's not a short question, but uh, maybe you can give me a, a, a quick reply and we'll pick it up after the break. Um, you mentioned big data. There's so much data. Uh, there are uh, challenges around handling and dealing with all this data. And, and, and what are you seeing as, as some of the larger challenges that we face in dealing with just the huge amounts of data today? 
Yeah, well, well, certainly I kind of mentioned it in the evolution of our profession and training and the aptitude, data-driven understanding is going to impact every role. Uh, like I said, whether you're a copywriter, designer, PR, specialization, digital, social strategist, doesn't matter. Whether you're executor, what you need to understand is that data and insights are going to be critical skills that you're going to have to have an increasing understanding of, and it's going to be required and expected. Well, so we're going to pick this up after the break and talk about talent requirements and what marketers are going to need in the future in order to be able to uh, compete in the industry. So hold on to that thought, Susan. We'll be right back. And we just want to remind you that, as you already know, marketing is more than ads and press releases. Marketing is about building relationships Connecting with other marketing professionals at West Virginia University's Integrate Conference might be the way to build some of the relationships. Held in Morgantown, West Virginia, August 1st through 4th, it's an opportunity to network and learn from industry leaders. Speakers represent large and innovative organizations like Cisco and Facebook, as well as agencies like Cappuccino and Fujikata. Register today at integrate.wvu for West Virginia University integrate.wvu.edu. And while we're talking about West Virginia University, we might as well mention their online data marketing communications program. It's the first graduate program to focus on data's impact on marketing communications. Learn innovative strategies from award-winning faculty as you shape the future of marketing by learning from the very best. Start by learning more at W at D M C for digital marketing communications. DMC dot W V U dot E D U. Lots of letters there. DMC dot W V U dot E D U. All right, we're gonna get back to the people with lots of letters after their names, I'm sure here. And uh, we had somebody who tweeted in a question. Maybe you can start by answering this one here. In a world where so much data, as you were talking about, is going to start getting collected, particularly as the Internet of Things appears and data, we're getting data from our refrigerator and data from our TVs and data from our toasters and everything, data from our cars. Whose job is it to collect and analyze the data? Is it still marketing's job or is it an IT function that collects it and interprets it and then hands the the uh, the insights onto marketing? Maybe you can talk about that. Oh, Paul, that's a great question to kick us back off. Um, You know, we have seen the migration of technology budgets going to marketing, and this has been a trend that we've been seeing over the last five years, first with CRM, customer relationship management, prospect relationship management, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, sales management tools, and now absolutely we're seeing the big data. Well, the technology or IT departments are going to be responsible for the technology capture of the data, the analytics of this data, and the decision-making is absolutely moved into the marketing arena to the point where it is the marketing teams now, the CMOs and the marketing team leaders, who are actually specifying and making decisions on technology purchases. Uh, Very interesting trend to see that happening. And Um, So thanks for that question, Paul. And and that does lead us back to what we were talking about right before the break with Susan. Uh, That means that there may be a really large talent gap between traditional marketers, the way that traditional marketing people have been trained, the way we think about engagement, conversationalists, and our need to understand more technically not only the uh, technology that's going to fuel this information, and the repositories, but also the analytic engines that are available and even the statistical and analytic tools that you need to have to make the marketing decisions. So A, do you think that we have a talent gap? And B, if we do, how do we address it? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, certainly we're in an evolution. I feel like so much being in an incubator and watching our profession morph and evolve in real time. One of the things that I would say about that is you may not be a data scientist or business analyst, but you will certainly be partnered with one. And you need to start 
understanding that that shift is real and get smart about investing in your skills to make sure that data-driven decision-making is something that sets you apart uh, and, and that you can bring to the table because not only are these technologies uh, being decided upon by the CMO, but also internally their team is changing as well. The dynamic of that team, the skills that they're looking for within that team, and uh, having the skill set to be very comfortable with understanding data and making decisions from it, taking insights into action plans, will be a critical skill for anybody in the marketing profession going forward. Thank you for that, Susan. Uh, you know, you're a social media pioneer. Uh, let me call you a pioneer. And, you know, we're part of uh, West Virginia University. We have the Mountaineers pioneering spirit and, and have uh, forged ahead, uh, sometimes being the leaders in, in, in thought leadership. And as an early social media pioneer, I would like to hear what are you seeing as some of those emerging social media trends that use of data that's driving some really interesting, cool social media that you're seeing? I would shout out a few pioneering leading companies that I think are really disruptors in this space. Certainly in the, in the retail arena, uh, Amazon has changed the game. <laughs> There's For no sure. doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would call them out. Um, I would also, another example in the retail space would be Zappos, um, just from a standpoint of unprecedented customer service. And uh, from both of those examples, you're, you're seeing the way that they've not only disrupted retail delivery methods, but focus on designing digital and mobile experiences that are based in data-driven um, prioritization of customer service, how they present products, reviews and recommendations you may also like. That's all based on data. Another one I would think in a different category, more like in the health and wellness arena, would be precision medicine, like the work that Medtronic is leading. Uh, new applications for wellness, making it easier and more efficient. You're starting to see amazing trends with telemedicine, precision medicine, and even some things like wellness apps like Calm or WebMD, the access to fit at the uh, tip of your uh, fingertips in your mobile device. And then I would say, of course, being from Detroit, I have to have a shout out for the automotive space, uh, seeing some really great, amazing innovations within the automotive, a ton of vehicles, uh, subscription models and mobility apps like GM's Maven. We're, we're just in the midst of disruption and how companies are thinking about creating new experiences for customers and the way that they deliver those, all based on data-driven and, and the capabilities that made possible through big data and the Internet and, and mobile devices, really. Yeah. You know, there's a, a lot of talk about the role of machine learning, artificial intelligence in the future and how we'll be able to use that in, in, in marketing messaging and, and, and customer engagement as well. And so we talk a lot about AI, but not really in the marketing sphere. So it will be interesting to see how machine learning can be implemented in the future for those of us in the marketing and communications fields. Um, you mentioned two, you said Amazon and you said precision medicine and, and, and isn't that an interesting combination? You know, we just heard some of the news about um, Berkshire Hathaway and JP Morgan Chase combining to form a new company with Amazon to, that's, uh, I'm not even sure I understand what they're up, up to there with, uh, developing a, a new healthcare model for their employees. You know, you wonder what's going to come out of that collaboration. It certainly sounds fascinating, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah, exciting times. Well, we are, uh, lastly, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the West Virginia Masters of Science program. Uh, you teach social media optimization at uh, West Virginia University in the data marketing communications program. 
brand new masters. So what's that like for you? And what, what have you seen from the students and the experience that that has provided uh, both the students and you as faculty? Well, it's one of the biggest honors and I'm so excited to be a part of the program. I'm passionate about being a professor of practice and believe it's important and critical to bridge academics with real world business demands. And what I'm able to bring to that course is real applications of social media listening, how to design research um, activation plans, optimization for engagement, and also measurement frameworks. And really bringing my students the ability to understand what's expected as table stakes when they go into uh, business and, and uh, my experience from leading a global practice at a large technology company has afforded me firsthand experience to be able to pass that on to my students. And so I'm, you know, really excited about being a part of it. And just as you mentioned, AI for marketing, that's essentially a lot of what my course is, is based on is looking at uh, the early days of where we were and the genesis of where this all started was natural language processing, text and semantic analysis. But it's advanced into machine learning and now artificial intelligence that you see um, out commercially available. Um, the other thing that's really exciting is uh, helping my students understand how it will advance. So we, we began in text and semantic analysis. But now we're looking at image and video, and there's so many different manifestations as this evolves. So um, it's exciting to be part of the program. It sure is. I wish I could take your course. <laughs> as you know, I teach the introductory course for the incoming students. And boy, I sure like would, would like to sit through your course. Uh, I think that you've done a, a very a wonderful job and, and a very compelling job of, of explaining how data and using data in, actually does infuse the soul of marketing, how people who are uh, involved in, in marketing as a profession and a practice can be a science and analytic and driven and also keep the humanity of, of our marketing profession alive. Uh, I look forward to more conversations in the future. I thank you, Susan Emmerich, as our guest. And thank you for joining us today. Great to be here. Thank you. You've been listening to WVU Marketing Communications Today, a bi-weekly program here on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.